All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are going to get started. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order for April 5th, 2022. Meeting to order at 7.30 p.m. <coughs> and uh, we have Mr. F uh, Fire Chief Fedorchuk on camera, uh, as well as CFO Ganita and Councillor Morio joining us by Zoom. Resolved that the amended gen agenda for April 5th, 2022, regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Bobick. All in favor? It's carried. Resolved that the minutes of the March 15th, 2022, regular council <coughs> me meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by. Councillor Bobick, discussion? None, all in favor? It's carried. Delegations and hearings, none. Recep uh, reception of petitions, none. Moving on to communications. <coughs> Sorry, I missed somebody. <clears throat> Director Fedorchuk. Director Fedorchuk is joining us by uh, Zoom as well. Welcome, Mr. Fedorchuk. 6.1. <clears throat> Whereas uh, the Better Beginnings program is a proactive measure to support families and to assist with the development of skills and education of preschool children. And whereas the Veteran Community Hall back room is an ideal location for such programming. And whereas Better Beginnings has requested a, redu a reduced rate for the next six weeks of rentals. Therefore, be it resolved that a grant to the Better Beginnings group of $660 be approved. You will also see a, uh, the attached letter on your screens there. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor White. Discussion, just, Mr. Poole? Just for Council's information, uh, the reduction right now is 50%. Thank you. Councillor Bobick. I was wondering if I should remove myself from the board. We don't personally gain from it, but yeah, it's up to you. Can you explain that, please? Uh, conflict of interest means that you must personally gain from what you were voting on, and you would not, I assume, personally gain from a reduction of our fees. Yep, thank you. I would agree. Further discussion? All in favor? Is carried. 6.2, there is a letter from the school division resolved that the letter from chairman of the board of trustees, Gary Wojcik of the Swan Valley School Division, dated March 7th, 2022, be received. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Um, you will see that letter attached below. Um, in that letter, it does ask uh, for us to meet with um, the board as well. I trust administration will send out that we, once this is approved, I guess. Yeah, if council wishes, we could, I, I would send the uh, transportation uh, committee first, set up dates with them, and we can meet regarding their bus routes. Uh, just to, to let you know the reason why this is so late, we didn't receive this in the mail till the day after our last council meeting. It has been a month. <clears throat> Councillor Delory. Have you had any uh, discussions with anybody from the school division regarding this? Because it seems almost like it might be a form letter they sent to every municipality. It is. is. I did talk to the bus garage. There was one in uh, 6th Ave South. It was getting a little narrow, so they asked us to clear it out. I just called Jordan. Okay. When, like, that's when we were widening streets, but he put that one to a higher priority because they sent the bus down and it was starting to get tight for them to get through. Because I don't imagine it was the town specifically that was the cause of canceled school uh, buses. No, no, but I think it's to be a good chance for, for them to air anything that may be an issue yeah. outside of even the snow problems. Okay. Absolutely. Any further discussion? All in favor? <clears throat> it is carried. And 
three resolved that the invitation from the University College of the North for a representative from the town of Swan River to speak at their 2022 nursing pinning ceremony on June 29th, 2022 be received. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Bobick. Uh, within that letter, they are requesting and within the resolution or within the letter, sorry, they are requesting representative uh, for June 29th. Councillor White. Uh, as a board member of PMH and uh, having a significant interest in the, the UCM program, I, I would do that with great pleasure. Wonderful. Um, Mr. Poole, if we could send that uh, response off to UCN and indicating Councillor White uh, would be more than happy to speak on behalf of Council at their June 29th meeting. All those in favor? And is carried. 6.4, an email from Western Financial Group. Um, resolved that the email from Western Financial Group dated March 29th, 2022 regarding AMM General Insurance Program B, sorry, General Insurance Program Renewal be received. Moved by Councillor Bobick, second by Councillor Delorier, you will see the letter attached um, in your agendas as well. Any any comments, Mr. Poole? I will defer to Councillor or sorry, CFO Ganita if he has a summary. Mr. Ganita. Uh, the letter is basically touting the benefits of the AMM group insurance program. The fact that uh, we have the lowest administration fees of comparable programs and, and uh, the lost pooling means a significant rebate to municipalities every year. That's the, it outlines the advantages of the AMM group insurance program. Thank you, Mr. Ganita. All in favor? Is carried. And 6.5. Resolved that the letter from Min the Minister of Canadian Heritage emailed March 29th, 2022, be resolved. Moved by Councillor Bobick. Second by Councillor White. You will see the email is attached below. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 6.6, 6. building permit applications. Resolved that building permits 722 through 822 with a total estimated value of $285,000 be received, moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? None. All in favor? It's carried. 6.7. Resolved that the letter from the Minister of Municipal Relations dated March 31st, 2022, regarding the Mobility Disadvantaged Transportation Program be received. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Delorier, you will see the letter is attached. Discussion? All in favor? It is carried. 6.8. Uh, reports of committees. Director of Public Works report be resolved that the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by. Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Bobick. You'll see the report below. Discussion? Uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Harvey. I just separated out as per Councillor Bobick's request. Uh, so the initial part is the Director of Public Works report, and then the bottom is the uh, foreman report, so the two different bullet points. Thank you. 
Any discussion, further discussion? Councillor Delorier? Um, have you have, had any discussions with the province regarding potential flooding on the river at all or anything like that this year? Uh, so far for the river, the forecast for our area is low flooding, uh, just due to the water content of the snow, but we're uh, continuing to get those updates, but all the updates we received so far, uh, and the last one they said even with uh, precipitation that the forecast is low for this area just due to the water content in the snow. We have a lot of snow, but a lot of it fell when it was really cold, so it doesn't have a lot of water content in it. We'll continue to monitor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Harvey, just one question for myself, just in regards to weed control with the new or with the um, province reducing its mandate with chemicals. Um, is that something that we are going to take a look at for this year? Yeah, I talked to uh, the foreman about getting uh, one of our laborers to get the uh, get his ticket so that we can do some spraying in certain areas that are no longer restricted. Excellent. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? All in favor? Is carried. Protective Services Report, be it resolved that the Protective Services Report for February and March 2022 be received, moved by Councillor Bobick, second by Councillor Morio. Uh, discussion, you will see both uh, February and March attached. Discussion? All in favor? It is carried. And moving on to 7.4 Council and CAO reports. Councillor Friesen, why don't you start us off this evening, please? I have nothing to report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Morio? Um, just a couple of meetings. Uh, last week we had our Committee of the Whole meeting um, where we discussed our finalized budget. Um, board with and last Friday uh, Mr. Poole and myself uh, met with the CEO of Swan Valley West uh, to discuss some initial uh, operational topics with the fire department that they're trying to set up um, with further meetings between uh, two CEOs and the two fire chiefs to uh, move forward and continue that dialogue and then just uh, earlier today, uh, myself and council, we uh, met with the uh, Minister of uh, Justice and uh, presented some of our crime issues and looked at different solutions and how to work collaboratively with the province to hopefully uh, reduce some of the crime issues in our community. And that's all I had. Thank you, Councillor Morio. <clears throat> Councillor Bobic. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Lord Tony. Uh, just a little bit about uh, Swan Lake Watershed, uh, just to promote our GROW program again. There's another program also coming out. I'll have a little bit more information on it. It's going to be a cover crop program, uh, which could add up to a fair chunk of money for the valley. Uh, probably looking right now, Watershed will be handling with this program close to over a million dollars intake that will be going out throughout the valley so this one just one other thing i just would like to direct a question to uh fire chief uh Podorchuk. there's been a, a conversation in budgets of a fire truck coming in the near future to the town of swan river would the purchase of this truck and and the size and the quality of this truck would have any bearing on the town of swan river what with uh, swan valley west going ahead with their own fire department yeah, absolutely. Uh, the proposed unit that we're we're currently investigating, uh, number one, would bring more water. It's about three times the amount of water we carry now uh, to our locations within town that don't have hydrant service or just out of hydrant service. Um, this truck would be newer. It would uh, assist us with our interior tax, being that it has more water. Uh, currently, uh, 
for example, a 60 by 20 one story high fully involved family residence requires 400 gallons a minute. Uh, our newest truck carries 800 gallons, so that gives us about two minutes of firefighting. This would greatly extend our firefighting range in, in town for initial attack and stuff. And, uh, that seems to be the what's happening lately with everything else. Uh, it gives us the ability to carry additional equipment that we need, like ladders, saws, that type of stuff, uh, additional hose that would assist us to go from hydrants to farther out locations. Um, it would just improve our service overall uh, a great good deal. Okay, thank you. Uh, just uh, to Director uh, Brendan Fedorchuk, just with a, a little bit on the wellness center there. So uh, my under the understanding, I'm just looking through the scheduling there, that there is more public swimming happening these days than as prior. Yeah, so currently on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we run our public swimming lessons. Uh, that would take up our current public swim time of um, 5 to 7 o'clock. Uh, but until our next set of lessons start, we do have additional public swimming times on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5 to 7. And then public swimming as well, typically sponsored on Wednesdays, and then um, Saturday afternoons as well from 1 to 3. So with the relaxing of the COVID, so we, we have more public swimming now? Uh, we currently do, yes. Um, but when public swimming or public lessons again start, that will reduce as well on the Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, but yes, currently we have more public swimming and we're doing all we can to keep up with the capacity because it's an extremely busy building nowadays. So we're using all our guards that we can to allow everybody we can into the pool. Oh, that's great news. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dad. You're welcome. Thank you, Councillor Bobbick. Councillor White. Yeah, relative to the CT scan, I got a letter from the Minister of Health uh, last week and she's instructed her senior staff Ian Shaw to meet with us, whoever us is, the, the medical service team, and I encourage other members of the council to want to attend, please do so. And once I get the exact date, I will share that with you. So that's the first direct communication from the minister relative to the CT scan to our group. And I remain that that's a good sign. Uh, with the bridging program, where we hope to bridge LPNs to BNs in Swan River, I have a letter also from the Minister of Health, another letter a confirmation rather that she is going to attend our meeting which I think is next Wednesday uh, with Red River Community College, uh, University College in North, Prairie Mountain Health and others to talk about that possibility. So those are, I felt, two pretty exciting uh, opportunities. In no particular order, I, I think it's important for me to support the Bozeman Lions who on the 30th of this month are uh, having a uh, Ukrainian dinner and the funds go to help the Ukrainian community. It's in our Veterans Hall. Uh, the sport fish dinner uh, is on May the 7th, and it'll be at the drive through Still some concerns about COVID. Uh, I can tell you also that Immigrant Services, our local group, but boy, they do a lot of wonderful things, are in fact bringing in multiple families from Ukraine who will need some help. And the Living Word Bible Institute, I just read in the paper today, and I met with, met with Ralph Betcher's wife just yesterday or the day before, I think they have four families coming in, and they have more space there, so they'll all need help. I attended the cow meeting as we all did earlier in the week. I uh, so the privilege of meeting with the Director of Public Works today, I think it was, talking about condi conditional use and variance applications. I'm glad you got that job, not me, because <clears throat> it's quite involved. And I had the pleasure of working with the majority of the council here today, meeting with Minister uh, Gertzen, the Minister of Justice, and uh, we shared with him our concerns and hopefully collaboratively we'll find solutions to those concerns. He was very open to our concern and our, our suggestions and I believe he's followed up with his deputy minister potentially in the near future coming out to meet with us. So, uh, pretty busy time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor White. Councillor Delorier. Uh, I met with, with the Ad Hoc Economic Development Committee from the G4. I guess I'll call it that because I don't know if we officially have a name that was to work on you know, the, the resurrection of, of cooperative economic development. Um, so we've, we've finalized the terms of reference, so I'll email those around and they'll be, I guess, discussed by the G4 at the May 2nd meeting. And we'll also, uh, we're, I provided the list of names that Council had talked about last meeting to the, to the committee, and uh, we'll be contacting those uh, individuals and letting them know that if they're interested in sitting on the on the board and that they have been I guess shortlisted so to speak um, 
other than that, I was away last week, so the only other meeting I attended was uh, was the meeting today with the uh, Minister of Justice. So hopefully they're, he's sending his top bureaucrat, so you know, oftentimes the power is in the hands of the bureaucrats, so I think that's a, that's a good sign. Um, so uh, hopefully we can get, get some sort of a, a game plan together with them. Other than that, that's it for me. Thank you, Councillor Delorier. Um, Fire Chief uh, Fedorchuk, any uh, any reports or comments for tonight's council meeting? Uh, no, nothing right now. Thank you, sir. And Director Brendan Fedorchuk, any comments? Yeah, just one. We got spring uh, sports coming up here, so there's minor baseball, minor softball, uh, soccer, and there is also a bike club, I believe, and swim club. So anybody's looking to register. Uh, there's various registration nights, and you can look at our Facebook to see the details for those. Excellent. Thank you, uh, Director Fedorchuk, for that. And it's nice to hear as well that uh, our pool is a busy place, so thank you for that. Uh, CFO Ganita, any, any comments or uh, anything to share with us tonight? As our public notice uh, went out in today's Star Times, and it will run the next two weeks as well for the financial plan public hearing on April 26th. Excellent. Thank you, sir. And I do have a report from Mayor Jacobson, and I will read that uh, report out. Um, in the last, and I, I quote his, his uh, document here, in the last two weeks, I have to report one town hall this meeting with the public was a good start for the community to begin the discussion on crime in swan river i thought it was well attended and i was impressed with the number we had viewing i thank the panel members for attending and answering questions director of prosecutions russ ridd rcmp staff sergeant duncan sergeant henson Derek armstrong of the consortium and copp all of council mr bouvier for moder moderating and the video team for live live streaming the event thank you this meeting is a good start and we need to move forward thanks to all who added their takeaways and council has dedicated a future cow meeting to move forward with our strategies and plans all of which will be shared with the public. I found a lot of questions were valuable and I also found Mr. Clemmer victim statement to be very compelling and moving. I have since met with Mr. Clemmer and had a very good conversation. This has led a recommendation from he and Mr. Merrick on a committee to do a review on specific crimes, social statistics that will lead to better solutions on substance, alcohol, abuse, and crime. We have invited Mr. Clemmer to speak before the Justice Minister, which I believe will be very valuable for the Minister to hear, as well with Mr. Sackle on behalf of business. There is a lot of work to be done, but this has to be a good exercise to begin the discussion, which all of us need to work together as a community. I mean also the entire Valley. Furthermore, I am impressed with how this has got our community talking about our next steps and how they want to work together, including how the business community has struck a full committee to discuss their own strategies to protect their business and property. In our budget, we have tentatively set a $50,000 line as a reserve fund for crime investments, either municipal, residential, or business. Details of this fund will be released near the budget hearing. Lastly, I wanted to state for the record, we have always reached out to our First Nations chiefs to be part of our town hall and any crime issues. Chief Janai called me the next day and apologized for not attending, but wants to be part of the next discussion. We have always included MLA Wochuk and MP Mazur. We had a good panel to start with. This can will be explained as we move forward. <coughs> our neighbor, neighboring municipalities are always invited and we have them participate and we will have them participate anytime they want to these discussions will always be all inclusive i have never thought any different as i mentioned the business group has formed to strategize and work together on crime protection this has expanded to nearly all the business which the goal is to include all i am happy to see this proceed there 
Their next meeting is at the end of April and again is only for business. As I mentioned that our budget is ready to present. Thank you CFO Ganita and the entire administration directors as well of, as all of council for this completion. I had a teleconference with MP Mazur to discuss crime and his next visit to the Valley. He will bring our concerns forward to the government in Ottawa. I also have had a very good meeting with MLA Wochuk on crime, the movement on the CT scanner and other concerns. Last Friday night I invited a new family to the I invited a new family to the Valley, the Daniels from Nigeria to their first Stampeder hockey game. Perhaps we have some new Stampeder fans. They enjoyed their evening of hockey and meeting some of the locals. Welcome to Wilfred and Paulette and their children Zoe and Elle. Th thank you, Mayor Lance Jacobson. Oh, and also a note that uh, the Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation meeting, one highlight was that the board approved the funds for the CT scanner contribution up to a max of $300,000 was approved. Again, that was uh, uh, Mayor Jacobson's report that he wished to have shared at council. And for myself, um, just working uh, again with the uh, Swan Valley Business Consortium, uh, the group of 150 individuals, including businesses, individuals, uh, um, municipalities, um, ministerial entities, and so on and so forth, as well as the task force that is addressing four for uh, specific needs within the community, um, as well as I attended with uh, Councillor Delorier, which he perhaps forgot to mention, uh, was with the planning district. That budget has been approved and we should see a request for our contribution. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Councillor Delorier, I believe it was about $7,500 or 74 and change. Um, it will be out the town of Swan River's contribution to the planning district. Other than that, um, I have nothing else that was uh, not mentioned um, in the meeting. Mr. Poole. I do have a couple of items to mention. Uh, our office is working on the town growth plans. So we're sending information to uh, consultants to to provide a proposal to the town uh, expect that in mid-may uh, the town hall uh, we're working on a follow-up to the questions and the answers and uh, just pertinent information so uh, council to expect that in an email to for review uh, updating Craig McDonald the provincial EDO on on a possible industry looking in in uh, Swan Valley as a target, so uh, trying to work with them as, as much as possible. Uh, the AMM June district meetings, our resolutions or the deadline to provide them is June 1st, so just a reminder to council if any resolutions to go to AMM, June 1st is the deadline. Uh, as Councillor Morio stated, attended the meeting last week with Swan Valley West CAO just to get a, a Coles notes of their expectations of their fire department and uh, we'll be working with Councillor White and Councillor Friesen on Age Friendly, uh, the provincial pilot program to increase communications amongst our seniors. So I expect that meeting as well in the short future. And had a, a short meeting with our uh, senior elections official just to get prepared for a general election. So. Thank you very much, CAO Pool. That uh, wraps up all of the reports that we have for this evening. So moving on to new business. <clears throat> 8.1. Resolve the April 19th regular scheduled council meeting to be rescheduled to take place Tuesday, April 26th at 7.30 p.m. in council chambers. Moved by Councillor Friesen. Second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor is carried. 8.2, resolved that the Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce audited financial statements for the year ended December 
31st, 2020, be received. Moved by Councillor Bobick, second by Councillor Friesen. You will see um, the 2020 year-end um, financials attached there. Discussion? Councillor Delorier? Um, which it's on questions on the next resolution, but uh, for the annual grant, but I guess I'm going to ask it now. Does the Chamber still do the, uh, you know, uh, Mecca to Thompson and Flim Flon, what, you know, uh, the recruitment Mecca they used to do? Councillor Friesen? The last time that we went, uh, Councillor Morio and I went with Stacy, and that's got to be four years ago. We haven't okay. done anything since. Okay. The last one was can the last couple have been cancelled from what I understand due to COVID. Yeah. That that's correct. I haven't heard of uh, um, that happening this year. Usually the planning is happens much sooner, but there hasn't been uh, any comments come down at this time. Because correct me if I'm wrong, we used to give about twelve thousand dollars, so four thousand of that was for the for the trip. Then I see we're giving eight thousand dollars right now. Is that, that, how that, is that how that used to work? So, I guess I can answer that. Sure. This grant was uh, for the operations of the Chamber of Commerce, and then another grant was given okay. for specifically the uh, the two trips, the Thompson and the Flynn, I want to say Flynn Flon, Thompson yeah. and Flynn Flon. Further discussion? All in favor? <coughs> it's carried. Eight. Uh, Sorry, I lost my place. 8.3. Uh, resolved that Council authorize payment of the annual grant of $8,000 to the Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce to be used towards the Chamber's pro... To Sorry. I need to start again on that one. Resolved that the Count... Res oh. Let me try the third time. Resolved that Council authorize payment of the annual grant of $8,000 to the Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce to be used towards the Chamber's projects and operations. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All those in favor? It is carried. 8.4. Whereas, whereas the town has vested interest in providing the safe protection of town resources and infrastructure, resolved that the town of Swan River hereby approves the purchase of necessary fire extinguishers to replace all extinguishers all existing extinguishers from Eclipse Fire and Safety for no more than $15,436 plus applicable taxes. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Morio. Uh, you will see the attached, um, uh, the decision paper attached. Fire Chief Fedorchuk, any comments for Council on this one? Uh, no new updated information on it, just uh, some pricing, additional pricing that Council had asked for before. Um, this st still is a priority issue because it does leave us uh, vulnerable at, in our protection with the, with the old extinguishers. Um, that's about it. Thank you, sir. Councillor Delorier. So the resolution reads that we'd be replacing all extinguishers, but I'm trying to parse out what that actually means because I see in the spreadsheet you have... Uh, almost all the extinguishers highlighted except for any of the ones bought within let's say the last two or three years am I to take it that those ones would not those ones I assume are we're going to keep or we're not going to throw up the extinguishers that are one year old are we? No the ones that are our newest extinguishers are 2013 and they're associated with the wellness center and the town office uh, they're still good they're not at the point yet where they have to be hydro tested uh, it's just an annual inspection uh, this is just the, the rest of them. Okay, because I, I see some in public works that are 2020, 2021, like manufacture date of 2020, 2021. Those ones, I would assume, we're not going to throw the, that, that out either? No. No, anything that hasn't required a five-year hydro test or that has to be inspected in the past, the ones that were inspected weren't properly validated, so we're not sure what condition they're in. Um, once they're not validated correctly, they're basically uh, garbage. Okay. 
Councillor Bobic. So we're entering into a new agreement with a new company. Uh, when we do that, do we ask for insurance or liability insurance and stuff like this so we never end up with another situation like this? Uh, yeah, this company is certified through Intertech, which is the governor body, one of the two. Um, they're completely certified. They have all the insurances in place. Uh, once uh, we bring back the fire protection bylaw, there are steps in that. Uh, it has been updated so to correct the situation that we did have with this one supplier. So it should not happen again. So am I under the understanding that they do come with liability insurance and compensation insurance, any of the companies that enter onto our properties? Uh, this one specifically does. We'd have to check the other ones. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It is carried. Eight point five resolved that the town of Swan River accessibility plan be adopted as received. Moved by <clears throat> moved by Councillor Bobick, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion. All in favor? It is carried. And 8.6, resolved that the 100 block of Fifth Avenue North close on Father's Day, June 19th, 2022, between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. in order to host the 2022 annual Father's Day car show. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Bobick. <coughs> Discussion, Councillor Bobick. Again, I go back to uh, liability insurances. Is there something that, that needs to be done or would they be covered under the town? It will be covered under the town. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Councillor Delorier. So, so I see they, they've approached all the businesses in that area. I guess, do we know, I'm not saying I doubt that, that they have, but do we, do we have a procedure for, for letting businesses know that this is happening? Or not currently. Uh, that's as I state. The committee has has approached their business plans. We, we I don't have anything in writing that says they that they check them off or anything. Yeah. I didn't have the businesses call me. Uh, I'm taking the committee as its word. Or its word. They they want to do this. They. I know that in their in our discussions. It's to be determined, but they they also want uh, tables along the curbs in order to have a craft show and possibly those businesses could put things out on those tables they're, they're in communication with those businesses so I know it's something that we've talked about for a long time and if, you know if they, those businesses open people will go Mr. Harvey and it is a Sunday so it's not a regular business day kind of thing further discussion all in favor is carried. 8.7. Sorry, Mr. Uh, just on, on this back. one. Okay. Uh, resolve that administration be authorized to begin the process of renaming public road on plan 54315 to Park Drive East. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, second by Councillor White. Mr. Harvey, discussion? So this is the road that we discussed at the cow meeting, the one north of Westwood that leads towards uh, the wells. And uh, what we discussed at the cow meeting uh, for the councillors that weren't there was uh, there is park drive to the west of it, but we can't just call it park drive because the housing numbers start at two. So that how this originated was uh, there's a business on this road that wants a civic address to get parcels dropped off. And uh, if you look at Google Earth and at uh, like iPhone maps, they both show it as Park Drive. So for simplicity for this one person and there's no one else on it, uh, council discussed calling it Park Drive East at the last cow meeting. 
Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Discussion? Councillor White? Oh, sorry. I'll call the question. All those in favor? It is carried. And moving on to accounts. <clears throat> Resolved that the accounts as follows hereby approved for, be hereby approved for payment. One, general account checks number 28720 to number 28772, totaling $199,735.08 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll account checks number 5054 to number 5061, totaling $94,135.74 as listed on Schedule B. Payroll account checks number 5062 to number 5067, totaling $14,512.47 as listed on Schedule C. Payroll account checks number 5068 to number 5074, totaling $97,275.95 as listed on Schedule D. Direct deposits totaling $725 as listed on Schedule E, and direct deposits totaling $9,702.71 as listed on Schedule F be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Morio, discussion, Councillor White. And just uh, on that question, the, the number, Manitoba Hydro, $7,000. And uh, when I go by the Jack Brown baseball diamonds, I'm thinking I've seen three or four lights down there. And now with the new buildings down there, they all have independent light also. All the new things that are built are the little change rooms. I'm wondering what it costs to leave those three, four big ones up all year long lit. Is that $100? Is that $500? Is that $2,000, for example? We'd have to get... We would have to... Councillor, or, uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Harvey. Uh, we'd have to get back to you on that. Okay, I appreciate it if you look into that, that because I still haven't already hard data that lights keep the bad guys away. And how many lights would keep them away? Do we need all of those lights? It's 2000 bucks. We've got other items we've turned down. And, and I'm not saying take it off those buildings, for sure, leave it on the buildings down there, but there's at least three big ones up there all the time. Uh, Director Fedorchuk. Uh, which lights are you referring to, Councillor White? Are you referring to Jack Brown big lights or the lights that are on all year? The like ones that the baseball all diamonds are the ones I notice all the time. Uh, so you're talking like the, the actual lights around the diamond or the one that's shining on uh, 9th Avenue there that you can see all the time? I can see multiple lights there all the time, but I'm assuming it's the ones right around the diamond. Okay, so the lights that you see all the time on stay on all year. It's a dust to dawn lighting system. Um, the ones around the diamond, we've explored this before and it was recommended that we don't use them for lighting, exterior lighting, just because the bulbs are near impossible to replace, uh, just because you have to get a bucket truck every single time to get up to those heights. And Manitoba Hydro are the only ones with that truck. Um, so that was one of the things. And then also the cost to run those halogen bulbs was, was pretty astronomical throughout the year. But we do have those LED lights that will stay on all year. The dust to dawn ones can be turned off? Yeah, when uh, they, turn, they, 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 they turn on. on. They can be turned they off turn. with the switch, I suspect. Yeah, they stay on all year, though. Like That's our, that's our lighting for the paths. I accept that. Yeah. But I, I think they can be turned off with the lights so they don't come on at night with a switch. They. Yeah, yes or no? They can be turned off, yes, but they do remain on. Well, I'm not sure. What do we need them on for, I guess, is the question. And if we don't need them oh. on, turn them off. Oh, that's the question. No. Oh, I get what you're saying. Yeah, we just leave them on because it provides lighting down in the, in the uh, parks for people walking at night. But we can turn them off if that's your no, request to That's off. just my, my thoughts out loud. I'm going to make a point of walking around and have a better look. Thank you, Councillor White. Uh, Councillor Deloria, you were next, and then um, In the uh, descriptions, the plan and sales, uh, 33264 security fence, fence rental for bylaw enforcement. I know what that's for. Is that monthly charge that we're getting being applied to that property? Yep. So, so if, and if, they haven't, I assume they haven't paid it, so it'll get added to taxes. Okay. I 
just want to make sure that doesn't fall off the plate and, and it doesn't get not associated with that property. Yep. Thank you, Councillor Deloria. Councillor Bobick. Uh, yeah, just on that note, I just see if I can get explained the 15120 for pool phone prepaid minutes. What would that pertain to? Uh, Director Fedorchuk. Yeah, so that phone is just a yearly prepaid texting card that uh, we give to our uh, CSRs and our programmer to allow them to text staff without using their personal phone. Typically, it's just for the deck supervisors and the CSRs because we don't want them using their personal phones on work time. Um, for Lan and myself, we do get the phone per diem, so it's mainly for our CSRs and our deck supervisors. And you're saying that's a yearly price? Yeah, it's a yearly texting plan only, and we pay, I think it's Rogers, for $115 for the whole year or something, and it's unlimited texting. Okay. Just the communication. Yeah, no, very good. Thank you. Thank Problem. you. Councillor White? Uh, Mr. Fedorchuk, Jr., I want to compliment you on uh, not having the staff have their own personal cell phones at work, because some always sense it's a big issue in the business world where they have their phones and it takes them away from the work and their concentration. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Councillor Morio, I apologize. I missed you. You were prior to Councillor White. I apologize. Go ahead. No, that's fine. Councillor Bobic uh, asked the exact question that I was just about to ask. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? It is carried. And whereas section 326 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary, supplementary taxes and subsection 306.1 provides that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessed, assessment alterations from Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations provided by Manitoba Assessment Services on March 28, 2022 be made to the business tax roll with the resulting increase amounting to $43.89 and the resulting decrease amounting $43.89. Moved by Councillor Bobick, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All those in favor, you will see the uh, listing and the I calculation got a question there. Here, sure, Councillor Morio, go ahead. Um, Mr. Ganita, has anything changed at the assessment branch? Why we're getting like so many alterations all of a sudden? Like, I we almost pass these almost every meeting as compared to years prior, where there was hardly anything. So I don't know. Is there has there been a change in process at the assessment branch, or um, just that many people? and things happening to prompt all these changes. I, I like to do the assessment alterations as soon as I get them. Perhaps in the past they were accumulated until there was a lot. Okay, good enough for me, thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? It is carried. <clears throat> Resolved that the financial statements for the one month ending January 31st, 2022 be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor Bobick. Discussion. You will see the financials uh, attached there as well. Thank you, Mr. Ganita. No discussion. I'll call the question. All in favor? It is carried. Resolved that the financial statements for the two months ending February 28th, 2022 be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion. Once again, thank you, CFO Ganita, for the financials. All those in favor? Just carried. 10.5. Whereas the town of Swan River used municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property under 
under the Municipal Act Clause 252E and set the fees and charges for the works under Clause 252-1A of the Act and whereas sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed on the attached Schedule A, totaling $1,303.90, Therefore, be it resolved that each of the unpaid amounts listed on Schedule A be added to the corresponding property tax roll and collected in that manner under Section 252.2 of the Act. Be it further resolved that notice be sent to each property owner property owner detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advising that interest will, uh, will occur on said amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective May 1st, 2022. Moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor Bobick. Discussion? All in favor? It is carried. All right, moving on to bylaws 11.1. Resolve that bylaw 12 2022 being a bylaw to amend the procedures bylaw be read a first time. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? It is carried. 11.2. Second reading, resolved that bylaw 1, 2022, being a bylaw to amend the organizational bylaw, be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Delorier. Second by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor White. Um, how, how are we doing with our potential youth member? I know uh, Mayor Jacobson reached out to uh, the school division and I did not receive a report before he left his... Maybe a little nudge again. again yeah. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? It is carried. 11 3. Resolved that bylaw 9, 2022, being a bylaw to establish rules and procedures for the use of municipal resources. Mm -hmm during the 42-day period before a general election be read a second time. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? Councillor Friesen? What does this mean? This basically means that you're, you're unable to use municipal resources on the 42-day section prior to the election, no more than any other person in the public. You can't use it for your political benefit. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Is carried. 11.4. Resolve that bylaw 11 2022, being a bylaw to establish a recreation equipment replacement service fund, be read a second time. Moved by Councillor White, second by. Councillor Friesen, discussion? All those in favor? It is carried. Uh, sorry, my screen left me. Should be on 11 5. Thank you, sir. Resolved that bylaw 13 2022 being amendment to the bylaw enforcement establishing a penalty for the violation of bylaw 9 2022 be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? All those in favor? is carried 11 6 <clears throat> resolved that bylaw number 14 2022 being a bylaw of the town of swan river providing for exemption of certain lands from taxation for municipal purposes be read a second time moved by councillor friesen second by councillor delorier 
Discussion? Councillor Bobick. Could you explain this briefly to me? That Was there not a bylaw to this effect prior to this? Uh, no. No? Well, in order to, in order to have these properties to become exempt, they have to be included in the bylaw. Okay. But we do that. Okay, that explains it. Thank you. Okay. okay. So the existing ones have been done through bylaw. Yes. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councillor Delorier. So, so when does when does this end? It obviously doesn't. It's not like the uh, the zoning where it runs with the property, just no matter who the owner is. It has to be based on on the on basically the tenant of the property. Um, who how what triggers they sell it that the exemption ends? Uh, the condition was there a condition? Sorry, I'm just gonna grab the. Was there a condition on the? <coughs> Excuse me. I just need to think. So if I'm correcting your question, Councillor Deloria, you're asking how did the the exemption come from the trans or come off of the transfer of this business and then move on to the new business. What triggers the end of the exemption? If they were to sell it to like how does it end, right? Yeah. I guess the I don't know the answer to that question. And it chooses changes its description? No, well, it, this it is different than a zoning was... change because a zoning change will stay with the property no matter who the owner is okay. until you until it gets rezoned to something else. But this how how will the town know when this property sells and somebody opens up a, a coffee and donut shop in there? I, I guess I guess you'd have, have to have a rezoning for that. But I, I guess how does the, how does we're giving it to this applicant in this instance, not necessarily the property, right? Right, and the the town does keep a list of tax exempt properties, and we do know when they're sold and when they change. So it would be our responsibility. So say if they sold it to just a separate owner who was operating the same. Actually, I don't know whether that would end and they would have to reapply. I have to research that to see if, if they would have to do that, if it's just a, a selling of the property, or is it an actual, like it's not, it shouldn't have anything to do with the use, but uh, I would have to research that to see exactly where it ends. It, well, it obviously must, because something must have triggered this to come here, because I'm sure when that was the First Baptist Church, it would have been tax exempt as well. Right. Mr. Ganita? Yeah, so uh, the assessment branch uh, determines the class and the Provincial Assessment Act exempts religious organizations completely or places of worship completely. But when this, when the, it changed hands and became owned by a organization that is not a place of worship, then the assessment branch changed the classification from exempt to school tax exempt because they said it's a nonprofit that still qualifies for school tax exemption. And so in order for it to be exempt from municipal taxes, the, the municipality has to pass a bylaw to make it also exempt from municipal taxes. And so the, the, the first part of the bylaw quotes from the Assessment Act and says, you know, subject to sections 25 and 26 real properties exempt from taxation for school purposes and outlines how it becomes exempt for school purposes. And once it's been made exempt for school purposes, then the municipality can make it also exempt from municipal taxes. So like, to be exempt from school taxes, it has to be owned by or held in their lease by a municipality, a community association, service club, public recreation commission, or other public body or group that serves the local community and is not 
occupied, used, or operated for profit. Okay, so, it's so uh, if, if, if it gets sold to a business, then it will no longer be a non-profit organization. And so the assessment branch will classify it as, as a business and then it, it will no longer be exempt for school tax and then it will no longer be exempt for municipal tax. Okay, uh, that, that's what I want to know is, so yeah. it's assessment branch that's the gatekeeper of this, okay. That's good. Good. Great question, Councillor Delorier. Thank you, Mr. Ganita. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Is carried. 11-7, resolved that bylaw 17-2022, being a bylaw to establish a crime Prevention Reserve Fund be read a first time. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It is carried. 11 8. Resolved that bylaw 1 2022, being a bylaw to amend the organizational bylaw, be read a third time and pass. This is a recorded vote. All those in favor? Actually, I need to move it first. My pardon me. Moved by Councillor Bobick, second by Councillor White. All those in favor? It's carried. Thank you, everyone. Um, 11 9. Resolved that bylaw 9, 2022, being a bylaw to establish rules and procedures for the use of municipal resources during the 42-day period before a general election be read a third time and passed. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor White. Discussion? All those in favor, it's a recorded vote. It is carried. Resolved that bylaw 13 2022 being amend, amendment to the bylaw enforcement establishing a penalty for the violation of bylaw 9 2022 be read a third time and passed. Moved by Councillor Bobick, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion, Councillor Delorier. I, I think we need to give this a little bit more thought. I think this puts our CAO in a, in a precarious position if, if he ever has to come down on this. How? Well, let's say you have four people in an election that you have to fine. And, you know, I, the fact that you have to administer discipline on, you know, what could be the majority of council who is basically your boss. I know nobody at this table would ever hold grudges, but I, ju I just worry that we're putting uh, Mr. Poole or any future CAO in a predicament. And I, I don't know what the answer is, so maybe we need to give this more thought, but I think we may be putting him in a, in a predicament that I'd, I'd hate for him to have to get off on the wrong foot with a new council by having to find members of his council right off the hop. I mean, ultimately, they've, they've broken the rules, but... Perhaps there's a, a better, different way, somebody more neutral than, than the CAO to admit to administer this. I don't know what that looks like or to be the arbiter of this. So right now, he's judge, jury, and executioner on this. Uh, uh, sorry, I'll just go to Councillor Morial first, Mr. Poole, and then uh, your your thoughts, please. Uh, hey. Go ahead. To, uh, to Councillor Delorier's point, I think the answer is in the bylaw itself under point part three. The screening officer 11, it says council shall by resolution appoint one or more screening officers. So we can create a, uh, pass a resolution, for example, say that our senior election official will be the screening officer if there's a violation of the previous bylaw that we just passed. And then that excuses uh, CEO Poole from that responsibility and it only goes to her or that individual um, if we pass such a resolution. Uh, Mr. Poole, and then just on your Zoom, if you can touch the screen, or maybe it's just on the TV. Oh, there you go. You'll have to use the remote, otherwise we'll lose. Thanks. Sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Poole. 
that is a good point, and that can be done. But the, the province did hold a few seminars uh, with CAOs on this bylaw, and that question did come up. And the answer was, do your job. So uh, <laughs> It's easy for them to say, yeah. man, you're going to get fired the next yeah. week. <laughs> like, but the fact is, is, is that... You know, we are the boss, we have a job to do, and we should be acting professional. And that's what the expectation of, of the municipality is to act professional. And, uh, and they, they are fully expecting the elected officials to follow the laws. We don't have a choice in this one, we must pass this. Uh, they're, they're fully expecting you guys to adhere to, to the rules. Uh, and they're expecting the CAOs to enforce those rules. But as Councillor Morio said, we can absolutely appoint the somebody else as a screener. <clears throat> Councillor Delorier. I, I think uh, Councillor Moore brings a good point, but I'd like to see that codified in the actual bylaw that the screener and the what do they call that when you when you ask for an appeal from the screener, you go to the next level. Um, for for the instance of this uh, contravention, that it have a separate a separate stream that you go through because normally it goes through whoever our screener is, and if, they, if they're not happy with that, it goes to you. So I, th I think for this uh, infraction, we should, we should codify that in the bylaw so that, you know, you know we, we say, oh, we'll do that by resolution, but resolution can be undone a heck of a lot easier with a heck of a lot less thought than changing a bylaw for one thing. And, you know, I, I guess I'm just looking out, I would hate for yeah. you to be put into that situation. So I think Mr. Morio's suggestion is, is great but I'd like to see it codified in the bylaw. I, I don't know if it's too late to do that, or, you know, if we, we'd have to hold it off to the next meet or table it to the next meeting. Uh, there is a timeline that this bylaw, we, we can only enforce it uh, to a point so many days prior to the election. So we'll, we will run into a point where we can't enforce it uh, until it's passed, but we'll have to, we have to pass a second bylaw in order to enforce it for that period. It's there's a procedure, but I believe we have time early enough that we'll be able to do this on the 26th. Councillor Morio. Um, again, to Councillor Doyle, you're saying in Part Six, if someone doesn't agree with the screeners stuff, they have the option to go to adjudication, which is a provincial adjudicator uh, appointed adjudicator under the Act that looks after that. Councillor Delorier, are you wanting this tabled? Uh, you know, I, I think as long as we, we get our act together and specify a, a separate screening for this infraction, whether it be by resolution, then I'd be okay with that. But I think we need, to, you can put some thought into, like uh, Councillor Morris says, maybe it should be the senior election official. That's somebody who's separate from yourself. It's kind of a temporary position anyways. I think that would be a perfect fit for that. So if we did that by resolution, I, I'd be fine with that. Thanks for the concern. <laughs> All right, uh, then I, I will, if we're not hearing anybody to, to table it, then while I will call the question. All those in favor? And it's a recorded vote as well. Thank you, it's carried. <coughs> Resolved that bylaw 13 2022 being amendment to the bylaw enforcement established. I just did I did, did I just read this one? You're on 11 11. Sorry, thank you. My finger, my line keeps moving. Um, either it's my eyes or Mr. Poole on, on his end. Resolved that bylaw 11 2022 being a bylaw to establish a Recreation Equipment Replacement Reserve Fund be read a third time and passed. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor White. Discussion? Call the question. Recorded vote. All in favor? It is carried. 11-12. Resolved that bylaw number 14, 2022, being a bylaw of the Town of Swan River, providing for exemption of certain lands from taxation for municipal purposes be read a third time and passed, moved by Councillor Bobick, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Again, it's a recorded vote. All those in favor? It is carried.
and resolved that pursuant to section 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. On the docket for that, we have Federal Electrical Boundary Review and Pump for One Replacement. Um, Mr. Harvey? If we could add cemetery procedures. Okay, and Councillor Delorier? Um, out of this meeting, I would also like to add in the fire extinguisher uh, resolution, uh, legal discussion around that. We have a mover and seconder on that one. I was writing my notes. I don't think we have a mover. Moved by Councillor Fries and second by Councillor Bobick. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> you call the question. All those in favor? It is carried. We are now in camera. All right. Resolved that this regular meeting of council now adjourn at 9.46 p.m. Moved by Councillor Fries and second by Councillor Bobick. All those in favor? It is carried. Thank you very much. Have a good evening, everyone.